What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahoney here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today, we're going to be counting down the top 10 cards of 2019. 2019 saw a lot of amazing developments in the Pokemon trading card game with the release of powerful new tag team Pokemon, starting with the Team Up set. So this top 10 video is going to include the top 10 cards from Team Up through Cosmic Eclipse. Getting started right away with number 10. Coming in at the 10 spot is Tag Call, a really good card out of Cosmic Eclipse. Searches out two tag team cards from your deck. Tag team Pokemon are the defining characteristic of the Pokemon trading card game in 2019, being featured in almost every single top tier deck. Tag Call searches out tag team Pokemon as well as the new tag team supporters out of Cosmic Eclipse. And there are a lot of really good ones. Cynthia and Caitlyn draws three cards and gets a supporter out of your discard pile. Mallow and Lana, a great utility card, healing 120 damage from your active Pokemon and switching it to the bench. Heck, even Guzma and Hala is starting to see some play, searching out special energy, stadium cards, and Pokemon tool cards. There is just so much utility to Tag Call. Free search, two for the price of nothing, absolutely amazing card. At the 9 spot, we've got Pidgeotto from Team Up, an unsuspected all-star of 2019. Pidgeotto exploded onto the scene with the top 8 finish at the World Championships and has captured 7 regional top 8s since then. Pidgeotto's airmail ability allows you to look at the top 2 cards of your deck, put one card into your hand and the other one on the bottom, and has formed the backbone of many control decks that have been featured in both standard and expanded format. Michael Pramwatt finished second place at the Portland Regional Championships with an expanded Pidgeotto control deck. And then, of course, Pidgeotto was also featured in JW's expanded uh, regional win at the Richmond Regional Championships. It's also been featured alongside Oranguru in a control style deck in standard format, which has been very popular, but also featured in some aggressive decks like Unbroken Bonds, Placephalon, that have seen a lot of success in standard format as well. How Pidgeotto will hold up when the new Cincino from Sword and Shield arrives on the scene, we will have to see. But for now, Pidgeotto definitely deserves a spot on the top 10 cards from 2019. Power Plant at the 8 spot has been a format defining card since its release, shutting down the abilities of Pokemon EX and GX in play. It's a stadium card, meaning that it is super easy to play. You just lay it down. It can be played on the first turn of the game going first, meaning that if you play Power Plant on the first turn, you can stop your opponent from using powerful setup cards like the Dene GX, Shaman EX, Tapu Lele GX, and the like. In the middle of the game, it can stop Zoroark's trade. Zoroark GX, one of the most popular Pokemon in expanded format right now. And of course, at the end of the game, after a reset stamp or an end, you've limited your opponent's hand. You can shut them off of powerful draw options to close the game out. Power Plant is definitely a format defining card and has been winning tournaments left and right, both standard and expanded format format just most recently won the Daytona Regional Championships with Guardian Sylveon at the hands of Drew Kate. And then, of course, JW Creewall's regional winning deck with Rowlet Alolan Executor in expanded format also featured for Power Plant. Definitely a strong card. And the fact that it affects Pokemon GX and EX means that it's got a long life ahead of it in expanded format. We've got our first tag team on the board with Picaram at number 7. It is the most winning tag team Pokemon of 2019, but of course, those numbers are a little bit inflated since it was also released the earliest out of a lot of the top tier tag team Pokemon when competing with Reshizard and Mewtwo and Mew. Picaram was released in February in the United States. It has got 32 top 8 regional finishes since its release, but only one regional championship win. It also has earned $137,000 collectively amongst players worldwide playing the card. Picaram has been the backbone of this lightning type deck that has been an absolute powerhouse in standard format and expanded format this entire year now being paired with Raichu and Alolan Raichu Tag Team GX Picaram's full blitz attack accelerating lightning energy into play and then of course Tag Bolt one of the most powerful attacks ever printed on a Pokemon card but now that other Tag Team Pokemon have been released Picaram only having 240 hit points as a basic Pokemon I can't believe I'm saying this actually is not that Big. It is one of the smallest tag team Pokemon GX available to us, with other tag team Pokemon easily boasting 270 and 280 hit points. Picaram has fallen off a little bit since the release of Cosmic Eclipse. Will it be able to make a comeback with the new cards available to it in Sword and Shield? We'll have to see. 
Number six is Reshiram and Charizard GX from Unbroken Bonds. It's earned $90,000 since its release. It's won two regional championships and an international championships and was featured in the top eight of the world championships as well. This card's pretty good. It can do 230 damage for four energy, which is easy to accomplish with Welder also released in Unbroken Bonds. And then can do a cool 300 damage for six energy going through any and all effects on the defending Pokemon, Caldeo GX does not stand a chance. Any Luminous Barrier, doesn't matter. Choice Helmet goes through all of that with its Double Blaze GX. Reshiram and Charizard is such a versatile card. It's been seen in a lot of different builds that have all seen success. Mewtwo and Mew uses Reshiram and Charizard for that Double Blaze GX attack. Also Outrage, a nice little addition that's often forgotten about. But a great attack when you have 270 hit points on this thing. Also, Green's Reshiram and Charizard uses the Green's engine to search out cards like Power Plant, Fiery Flint, and Welder. And then, of course, there's Turbo Reshizard, which uses other attackers like Heatran, Victini, Prism Star, and, of course, Jirachi and Dedenne for consistency, as well as Ninetales from Team Up to gust up anything on the opponent's side of the field. Reshiram and Charizard is definitely a force to be reckoned with in the Pokemon trading card game right now, and it's seems to have a bright future ahead. Like peanut butter and jelly, you can't have Reshizard without your Welder. Coming in at number five, Welder from Unbroken Bonds, one of the best energy accelerating trainers ever printed. It puts two fire energy from your hand on one of your Pokemon and allows you to draw three cards. A lot of the most successful decks in this format rely on Welder not only to accelerate energy, but to draw through the deck. A lot of these decks are only playing for Welder as their supporters with no other draw supporters in the deck. Mewtwo and Mew decks use this strategy. Turbo Reshizard decks use this strategy as well as Blacephalon decks from Unbroken Bonds. Blacephalon GX decks also use Welder, though they do play some other auxiliary supporters as well. Welder even won the World Championships this year in Henry Brand's Mewtwo and Mew GX deck. Even though Welder hasn't quite made the hop into expanded format yet, it has been an absolutely dominant card in standard format, easily earning it the five spot on our top 10 list. In fourth place is Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. It won the World Championships this year. It's won three regional championships since then. It has earned a collective $75,000 worldwide with players piloting the deck. Mewtwo and Mew clocking in at 270 hit points. Has an amazing ability allowing it to copy any Pokemon GX or EX attack from the bench or the discard pile. The versatility has made this card an absolute powerhouse in standard format, though it hasn't quite produced those results we were promised in expanded format yet it will do something eventually it has to right it's too good to not but in standard format it has been an absolute powerhouse an absolutely format defining card being able to copy cards like charizard gx flare blitz 300 damage for just four energy it could copy greninja gx to go through effects on the defending pokemon macargo gx to do Nearly infinite damage as well as deck out the opponent. I mean, the opportunities for this card to succeed are endless. It even copies Reshiram and Charizard GX, who we saw at the number six spot. Now that Mewtwo and Mew has Megalopunny and Jigglypuff GX from Cosmic Eclipse to copy, it is more powerful than ever. But how will the card hold up with the release of powerful Pokemon V and Pokemon V Max from Sword and Shield next year? I'm anxious to see. Coming in third place is Reset Stamp and... I missed the ball on this card. I thought it was overhyped and not all that great. Turns out it's very good. Having the ability to reset your opponent's hand at any time in the Pokemon trading card game is very powerful, especially since the draw options are so great that you just need something to bring the opponent's hand size back down to a reasonable level. And Reset Stamp provides just such great comeback potential at the end of the game, limiting your opponent's hand size to the amount of prizes that they have remaining. It gives control decks an option to completely control the opponent's hand size, limiting it at the end of the game and then removing it all together with cards like Mars and Jesse and James. But for any aggressive deck, it could be a very powerful option for some comeback plays with some late game sweeps, power plants, things like that. Reset Stamp has been played in a ton of decks, a ton of successful decks, and it's even too good that it's getting banned from expanded format altogether. Robin Schulz defied logic and reason and did not play Reset Stamp in his international championship winning Reshizard deck, proving that some aggressive decks don't actually need the option to reset the opponent's hand size. If they just go pedal the metal the entire way, they can bypass the need for comeback potential altogether. But most decks are playing Reset Stamp because having that comeback potential is pretty good when you start out the game losing. 
The second best card printed in 2019 is Jirachi from Team Up. You could easily make the case for this to be the top card from 2019, but it doesn't quite have the expanded finishes that it has in standard. So I think second is appropriate, but this card has been dominant in standard format. It has been featured in control decks like Pidgeotto Control. It's been featured in aggro decks like Picaram, Reshizard, Mewtwo, ADP, Unbroken Bonds, Cephalon, this thing is featured in everything. Stellar Wish is just one of the best abilities ever printed on a Pokemon card. It allows you to look at the top five cards of your deck, pick a trainer card you find there, and put it into your hand. Then Jirachi goes to sleep, but there is a skateboard and switch, giving you some great mobility options for the Jirachi. Jirachi goes great in non-GX decks, giving you a Pokemon consistency option that doesn't give up two prizes. It goes great in tag team decks as well, I think. The versatility of this card easily earns it that second place spot of cards printed in 2019. The best card printed in 2019 is Dedenne GX. No mystery here. It's good in expanded format. It's good in standard format as well. The ability to discard your hand and draw six cards is phenomenal. And you don't have to waste your supporter for turn doing it, meaning that these welder decks that have been running rampant in standard format can get away with just playing four welder because they can use Dedenne GX to just ham through the deck and see so many cards that they're going to find their welders if they just draw enough cards, which Dedenne GX allows you to do. When paired with Jirachi, you have absolute amazing access to your deck, to Dene GX, draw six new cards, Stellar Wish, switch Stellar Wish. You get to see so many cards with Dedenne GX and it's being played in expanded format since you don't always want to just set up with Shaman EX, fill your hand to six. Sometimes it's best to just ditch cards all together. Discarding cards is a very powerful effect in the Pokemon trading card game. It thins your deck. It gets resources into the discard pile so that they can be used later on with cards that retrieve cards from the discard pile, even though Day Day Change can only be used once during your turn, meaning that you can't Dedenne GX and then Dedenne GX again, it is just still that good. With 160 hit points, it's less of a liability than Shaman EX as well. Dedenne GX should just be good as long as Pokemon cards are being played. I see this card having a long, long, long future in expanded format and should be dominant in standard format as well as long as it's standard legal with the release of Quick Ball we got even more options to search out to Dene GX coming our way. And that about does it for the top 10 cards of 2019. Let me know what you thought of the list in the comments below. Make sure to like the video, sub the channel, ring that bell. Check me out on Twitch where I stream Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday. I'm, I'm waiting. Did you did you go to Twitch? Go follow the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Tricky Jim. I stream there every single weekday. Thank you so much to everybody who has checked me out on Twitch so far. It's a lot of fun. Also, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com for all your trading card games, singles. Also, fullgripcodes.com for all your PTCGO codes instantly delivered. Fullgripcodes.com. Y'all take it easy. Have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Peace.